Bishop, uh, you're um, yes. you're working in Tanzania, and uh, and 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 Nick, what's what's your role, mate? Uh, I'm a vicar of a church in Birmingham, uh, in the UK. So yeah. Now you guys are doing one of the presentations uh, that we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow afternoon, I think, and you're really going to be zeroing, zeroing in on the prosperity gospel. And uh, now, now, how are you playing? Is one of you giving a paper and the other one responding? Yes, exactly. I'm getting a paper. You're giving the paper. Yes, sure. Right. Well, let's start with you. And what's your what, what's the argument that you're going to be putting tomorrow afternoon? Well, the argument I'm going to be putting forward is that uh, in this uh, time and age that we have, uh, for me. Liberal theology is scooping a lot of church leaders who uh, claim to be orthodox, but at the lower level, prosperity gospel is actually uh, flooding the congregations, uh, ordinary members of our churches. But the thing is, prosperity gospel is a denial of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, because it's all about here and now, it's stripping uh, the gospel of the eschatological dimension of it and makes everything look like here and now but also uh, the personalities that are involved the, the people who are growing big and the focus of everything is the human being so I think that is probably some of the, the things I'm going to be talking about mm -hmm. yeah and your response Nick yeah so and um, part of my response is that I think that the prosperity gospel is liberalism for those who believe in the supernatural so my PhD is in romanticism uh, and which is the sort of intellectual root of liberalism, but I believe also the intellectual root of the prosperity gospel. So um, I think that one, one of the things that Muita's presentation reveals is how structurally much of the prosperity gospel actually functions very like liberalism. So in its eschatology, in its denial of the importance of sin, in its emphasis on how it's the incarnation that brings us up to God, um, on a kind of metaphysical level, those sorts of things. So that they're really just two sides of the same coin uh, coming from the same philosophical movement, although they look incredibly different. Now, um, Mawita, I know little about the impact of the prosperity gospel in Africa. In fact, the, the thing I know most about it is a little clip from John Piper where he was so critical. But can you tell... Just help us understand, those of us in the West, the devastatingly wicked impact of this false teaching yeah. in your continent. Well, the thing is, in, in Africa now, with the challenges of poverty, challenges of disease, challenges of um, poor health care, uh, prosperity gospel seem to be offering solutions which actually are not there. Mm. Because people are focusing now on uh, divine healing, which is mostly actually being faked because uh, the, the, the personality cards that are involved are promising more than what actually they offer. So in Africa, when people are looking for security, people are looking for uh, ways of getting out of poverty, and they think that if you give uh, to the preacher, to the leader of the church, which is uh, uh, before you, and then God will bless you. So it's like they are, they, are getting, they are getting a lot of money out of the poor. But it's all going to one person. So in that case, actually, prosperity gospel is devastating families. When you think about people who are getting salaries and being told, you must not take this, you must dedicate this to the Lord. And then people are taking all of their salaries and putting in the in the offering, but hoping to get some blessings back. Issues of childlessness, problems in marriages, people want promotions in the work, uh, work at workplace, uh, politicians want uh, to be uh, uh, successful. And therefore, it is actually very destructive because it's, it's, actually, um, it's actually destroying the place of Jesus Christ uh, in changing lives and giving people hope. So that, I think, is very, very destructive in Africa because it's making people, the poor people poorer and those who are having problems are being given false hopes. And that, I think, is what, uh, what I think uh, the Prospect Gospel, particularly in Africa, is doing. And these guys are very rich. I mean, I'll be showing some videos. They're, they're, they're super, super wealthy people. They are doing business and gospel at the same time. And this, this is what people don't actually realize, that these people are businessmen in their own right. But they are, they, they are also pretending to be offering solutions to spiritual lives that people have. But in reality, I call it, it's witch doctoring on Sunday. Witch doctoring yeah, on, Sunday. on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Your head. No, so, so, I mean, that's, that makes sense to me. Yeah. And I think you're going as, let me just clarify it though, yeah. I think you're going as strong as saying 
it's not just that they are deluded, they're actually wicked. Wicked. Yeah, sure. Because because the tricks they do are the tricks which, if you really follow them very closely, you realize that these people are actually, you could call them, quote-unquote, antichrist. They're anti-gospel, they're antichrist, they're manipulative, and the, the, the ordinary people don't actually realize that. Because, it's a, because, because it's a different Jesus they're preaching. It's a different Jesus. It's not the Jesus that we know. It's a Jesus who actually died on the cross, Jesus who rose so that we may have new life and eternal life. They're promising things which you could say is actually uh, diviners and witch doctors who come on Sunday and pretend to be uh, speaking about Jesus Christ, but they're not. Mm. They're not. And it's so subtle that people with degrees, professors, politicians, academics are all going and sitting under them and not actually being able to realize that what they're actually getting is uh, junk. It's, not a, it's actually a junk gospel. It's not a true gospel that we know. Now, you're watching the GAFCON live stream. It's great that you're with us. Um, I've got two guests. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> and, sure. And now, I want to just talk with you guys about um, the whole issue of... Um, uh, I, I, can, I can see how um, it's so attractive in Africa, but I can't quite get how people can't see the lie because it, it should show up as a lie really quickly. I'm going to ask you about that in a moment. But first, Nick... How does it manifest differently in the West to the way we've heard it described in Africa? Um, well, I think it's quite it's more insidious in the West. So often some of the ideas will creep into otherwise orthodox churches. So people will read books or go to a seminar or see someone on TV. And the way they talk about faith will s sort of begin to subtly reorientate the way they think about faith so that in fact, they'll start to see faith as a kind of power by which you get things. Uh, and um, so that's very destructive of people's confidence in Jesus. It's very destructive of their assurance of salvation. But, but within churches, it can take over still in, in the West. Um, now, I've never been hungry a day in my life. I don't know the sort of uh, experiences of life that, that Muita speaks so, so passionately about. But um, when people get sick, there is still that temptation to, 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 to say, well, if, if God wants to bless me, surely he, he, you know, it says in Isaiah 53 that by his stripes I'm healed. So healing's part of the atonement, and they believe that very passionately. And I think one of the reasons they don't see through the lie is that um, it depends on their faith. It depends on them believing strongly enough. And if you fail to believe 100%, you don't get the blessing. So the temptation is always, if you start to question, you definitely don't get the blessing. So you have to, you know, when, when the question starts to come, that's the point at which you're told, well, the problem is you. And so it's, it's actually very subtly self-reinforcing that you don't dare question it because you know that if you question it, you're going to, you're going to die of the cancer that you're trying to be healed from. Gentlemen, thanks so much Thank for joining us. It's Thank been great much. to have Thank this you. conversation Likewise. and look forward to catching Thank you guys around. Yeah, Moita and Nick there, Thank it's you. great to have them. You're on the GAFCON live stream. It's great to have you with us.